He's the model of a modern good Samaritan. Japan's codes and norms mean little to Mr. Obata. He follows a compass of his own. Haruo Obata is Japan's best known volunteer. He lives in Hijimachi on the country's southernmost main island, Kyushu. Selflessly helping others gives his life meaning. And he's earned honors and admiration for it. But that hasn't changed him. Japan has to take him as he is. The starting shout, and they're off for the 100-kilometer walk from Yukuhashi to Beppu. Shortly after, down by the river, someone's lying there. Red is Obata-san's color. Today is his birthday, his 80th. He is walking along with the rest, just not as fast. Obata always holds his own. And what's with the camo jacket? I don't want to be noticed, but I don't want to hide away either. I'm not breaking the law, just doing what suits me best. He may be a bit of a recluse, but wherever he goes, his reputation precedes him. He doesn't like to hear it, but many people call him a hero. Sometimes his popularity gets in the way, but he never lets it show. He saved children. I recognized him as I drove by. I definitely wanted to shake his hand, so I stopped. I think he's cool, like Superman. The sign reads, for the children's happiness. That's what he's marching for. Many people have done it before, but he's doing it his way. He's an individualist, something of a rarity in Japan. In 2011, he helped clean up after the tsunami. Now, a kind of obata cult has formed. Many retirees don't know what to do with themselves, but he spent at least 500 nights sleeping in his car and looking after himself however he can. He's located missing children. The police had given up, but not Mr. Obata. I was so glad I found them, he says. Mr. Obata sees his society growing cold and says it needs warmth and compassion. His credo is simple, do something, expect nothing. And that goes for the 100-kilometer walk, too. To give up would be sad. If I try but don't make it, that's all right. What counts is the challenge. It recalls the samurai spirit, dare it and bear it. 6 a.m. the next morning. Obata didn't make the entire 100 kilometers, only 60, and then his daughter picked him up, but he's not stopping to rest. Health is your greatest asset. As long as you've got your health, you've got nothing to fear, come what may, unless a woman comes along. Mr. Obata lives near Beppu, famous for its hot springs. He seems to be bubbling with energy himself, which is why his wife left him. His pace was just too fast for her. The one-time fishmonger is now a volunteer. Community service is a virtue in Japan, for now. But the ranks of volunteers are shrinking. The younger generation no longer has the time. That bothers Mr. Obata. I put myself in the other's place. Supposing something happened here, a tsunami or an avalanche or my house dropped into a sinkhole, then I'd be happy to have someone to help or comfort me. Mr. Obata lives on 500 euros pension a month, but he's no slave to a set standard of living. The place may look like a mess, he says, but everything's in its place. Besides, he's the one who has to live in it. His system involves recycling. A little oil and anything can be made useful again. 
If you're a volunteer helper and you have to use both hands to open your toolkit, you've already failed. Mr. Obata's system also includes a very simple diet rice balls with salted plum preserves. Daily. At the supermarket, this would cost 100 yen. But homemade, it only costs around 30. <laughs> He's realized that recognition can be a good thing, but only if it comes from the right people. When I read the thank you notes from the primary school kids, it brings tears to my eyes. I'm so touched. They mean so much more to me than the words of a prime minister. I don't care which one. Anyone who lives in conditions like those in a disaster area knows how to enjoy the little things, says one fan letter. Dear Mr. Obata, I admire you. I hope you can use these things. Please take care of your health. The sender's unknown to him. They've sent instant rice and soups. <laughs> then he watches a little television, a gift from his daughter, and keeps track of Typhoon number 19. If it causes too much damage, his help might be needed. Mr. Obata is always ready to answer the call. Next morning, Mr. Obata takes out his great love, his little Honda. The typhoon veered off, thankfully, and the danger is past. So he uses his energy to tidy up the water's edge and complains about all the plastic he finds. Making the best of everything means thinking practically. The little pipe from the oyster beds. I thought, why throw it in the trash? So I'll take it home and make a whistle out of it for emergencies. I'm sure they'll appreciate it and say, thank you. In Beppu, a neighborhood spokesman has invited Mr. Obata to raise the residents' awareness of the hazards they're exposed to. Here, everyone knows everyone else. When he still had the fish shop, the whole neighborhood could hear him. And he's still loud today. He says, people compete with their voices, so you should always call out at the top of your voice. That's what I learned from him. It's a Sunday, and yet Mr. Obata is here. It depends on the demand. I don't just come here to chat. A nursing care facility for Alzheimer's sufferers practices evacuating, fighting fires, and summoning help. Mr. Obata takes out the whistles he's fashioned himself out of pipes he found on the beach. His first customer is the director. Why can't I do it? Mr. Obata is not allowed to help out here for insurance reasons, so he plays the role of mascot instead. But nursing homes aren't really his favorite place to be. I'd rather not go in. Even if I end up in this condition myself someday, I'd rather be cared for at home, to be quite honest. Fire? Now what? Mr. Obata's already put it out in the next building. No sweat, no health is another of this energy bundle's maxims. His next stop is the sandbox to warn against possible dangers. Mr. Obata's the volunteer at a playground. The spokesman offers him the megaphone, but he really has no need for it. He's quite serious when he describes Japan's younger generations as too lethargic and apathetic. They just don't know the risk. 
He provides tips, for example, on what shovel to use to fill sandbags and how sturdy cardboard can be put to good use. And he also has some helpful tips on crisis hotspot lingo. It isn't called sandbag until it's actually filled with sand. That grandpa is in incredible shape. I don't think I would have known how to do it on my own. So I'd like to learn something from Mr. Obata. Mr. Obata's unbelievable. Cheerful, fit, and also very knowledgeable about disasters and so on. I think he's a really great person. Mr. Obata says Japan's only about 30% prepared for all potential disasters. Many people don't even have a whistle. He's got an entire carton full. But he's not done yet. Work isn't the same as being busy, he says, and you can always find something meaningful to keep yourself busy with. <laughs> but his agenda is constantly being run over by groupies. That's just the price of popularity. Maybe I could do something like that too, in small steps. And if everyone pitches in, we could eventually help everyone in Japan and the whole world. We talked about nutrition. He says you can survive on nothing but rice and plum preserves. What an interesting human being. Plastic in the food chain is a curse for the heavily fish-dependent Japan. I don't do this for others. Sometime it'll hit me too. And to protect myself, I must protect the animals of the sea. The moment he arrives, the eco-warrior is surrounded by admirers. No problem, he says. I'm famous for hugging women. Hmm? Oh, you don't say such things. Yay! Haru Obata. Aged, helpful, and joyful.